Hey, this is Adam Green, the director of Hatchet, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com. Welcome to the Station of Decapitation. Without Your Head, I'm Nasty Neal. Sanibel Lecter. That would make me terrible, Troy. Yes, and joining us here is Glenn Douglas Packard, the director of Pitchfork. How are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, you guys. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy Happy horror. (laughs) <laughs> yes, happy <laughs> horror days and all that good stuff. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for people uh, out there not familiar yet with Pitchfork, uh, can you give them an idea of what the movie's about? Uh, yeah, it's about a group of uh, kids well, in their uh, early 20s um, from a school of arts in New York City that um, support a friend and come home with him to the countryside of Michigan to face his parents about a deep secret that he's been holding on to, and they're there for support. And while they're there, they um, end up being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and there is a creature that is stalking and killing each one off at a time, and that is the main man himself, Pitchfork. Mm-hmm. Is, is there anything and, in the... Go on. Yeah, this, of course, to that, it's not just that simple, but it's no. um, it's really um, a slasher horror film with um, undertone and story of a family and their son. So each thing has to do with the relationship between parents and their child. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, there could be even more to what you just said. Yes, there's a, there's a lot more that is going on in the film, for sure. But it definitely is, Pitchfork is a um, is basically a trigger effect of what has happened to his childhood and his relationship with his parents. And same thing with the lead, mm-hmm. uh, Hunter, and his relationship with his parents. Mm-hmm. So, does anything inspire the story? Actually, there is. Um, about eight years ago... I happened to catch a rerun of an Oprah Winfrey show. <laughs> Crazy <Wow>. enough. <laughs> and you have the strangest a... inspiration ever, I think. <laughs> right? And she was uh, interviewing a, a young writer who had written a, wrote a book called The Boy Called It. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. And he, he was treated as a dog his whole entire life. Um, and he turned his life around and wrote a book and is inspiring to people. And I thought to myself, what if it went the other way? What if the guy had gone mad? Mm. And that is kind of how Pitchfork was created in my head. Mm -hmm. And for eight years, I've been like writing things down and, and, um, and I released him at the top of 2017. When you said you've been writing stuff down, like uh, like different like different kill ideas, different ideas you want to put in the movie. Yes. Yeah, so for the last eight years, I've just been jotting down notes um, while I'm working because I've been in the entertainment business for like 25 years, um, but never directed a film. So I started just writing ideas down. I remember seeing Jackie Chan once. He used to write like little notes down in his wallet, and so I started doing that on my iPhone. Every time I came up with an idea for Pitchfork, I would write it down and keep it within those eight years. And I basically had a complete story by the time, you know, I started working with mm-hmm. um, the other writer, Daryl Griglio. So that's when it all came about. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you mentioned there about the inspiration, actually, for the character, um, I'm always drawn to uh, villains that you, can, you have some sympathy for. Uh, do you think that's uh, important in a, in a horror story? Or any story? Yeah, actually, I think for a horror franchise, you want the horror fans to actually love the killer. You actually want them to eventually start rooting for the villain. Mm -hmm. And I think I created that with uh, Pitchfork. I know that that's important to the horror fans. So I created a character that you love to hate. So you hate him, but at the same time, you realize that because of his childhood uh that he is a product of what has happened to him in his life mm-hmm. so you have a little bit of like heart for the guy mm-hmm. uh where where did the pitchfork come from um 
Well, the Pitchfork really, uh, I'm a huge fan of the horror genre and I'm a huge fan of the superhero genre. So I kind of took a mix and then I grew up on a farm. So I wanted to create a character that had that kind of feel to it, kind of superhero-ish, kind of horror-ish. So I thought how perfect to, you know, there's been Saw, there's been Hatchet, there's been all these those kind of um, titles. And I was like, why hasn't someone done like pitchfork, you know? So I replaced, you know, his hand with a pitchfork mm -hmm. and he's very Wolverine slash Freddy Krueger. Uh -huh. well, how hard was that to incorporate into the, into like, uh, into the movie, you know, um, having the actual, you know, prosthetic and having uh, one of his hands, a uh, pitchfork. Well, do you mean like, the idea of it or actually like um, the, executing it. Yeah, actually, yeah, like the technical side. Yes, technical side. So that's a really good question. <laughs> so um, we got on set and brought in um, as a, a woman that I had met on Instagram to do my um, makeup and to create Pitchfork. And I also brought in a guy that I knew from Las Vegas. Their names are Chris and Candy. And he was going to intern. And um, they collaborated together and kept doing different prototypes and all that stuff. And with the, by the time we got Pitchfork on set, they had created the perfect uh, monster. It took, a, it took a lot to make sure, like, the actor himself, they really, like, really planned it out on like how he held um, the pitchfork and all of that stuff. The way that it was attached to his hand was so important so that it, we made sure you couldn't tell that there was not, not a hand there. Mm -hmm. no. <clears throat> Who did the whole, the, so it was like a group of people did the whole design of the whole villain himself? Or the whole. Well, yeah, I, I actually, I, I had the whole idea of pitchfork and, I, I actually would draw him, which was terrible drawings. But then they, when they got here on the farm uh, in Michigan, they, they executed and made it happen. Yeah. Now, did you ever play yeah. with a pitchfork on the farm? Did I what? Did you play with a pitchfork uh, growing up on the farm? Oh, well, it's funny because it was filmed on my family farm the whole entire movie oh, really? in 21 days. And, you know, I went back home to Claire, Michigan, where where we filmed it. And... It's funny because it's the place that I grew up. We had like, there's a scene where Pitchfork brings all of his victims to this bloodshed. And that was where I used to play as a kid all the time. Um, I was like one of those kids. I would play Friday the 13th in that cabin all the time and Evil Dead all the time with my friends. So it was really cool bringing that all back. And yeah, I played with a Pitchfork many times in my lifetime. Uh. <laughs> so actually, uh, our uh, Troy and I, our uncle, uh, uh, well, our uncle's Baron Gary, and I remember they, they always would tell us stories because one of them stabbed one of the other ones when they were playing with a pitchfork once. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yes, indeed, like a, they did. Like a full-on <laughs> spearing with the pitchfork, or? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was pretty bad at the time, but yeah, you know, they'd have all kinds of weird childhood accidents, like shooting each other with an arrow. And yeah, because they would do a thing with it. Like, they would shoot the arrow straight up in the air and see where it would come down and then try to get out of the way. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Oh my Didn't God. say they were the smartest kids yeah. you ever had. Seriously. <laughs> that reminds me of those, those reminds me of those yard charts. <laughs> yeah. Such great weapons back yeah. in the day. Uh-huh. Yeah. Which are, they've been banned for quite a while now, I believe. Yeah, they have. <laughs> yep. Uh -huh. Oddly enough, they came up in a, this is another interview I did the, the, the other day. Yard <laughs> did they? Yeah. Did I, don't, they? I don't know why. That's really weird. Yeah. Uh, so you said you're a, a big uh, horror movie fan and slasher fan. Uh, is that like the your favorite genre of movies? Um, my favorite, I, I have like three that I love. I love Home Invasion, I love slasher, and I love uh, devil movies. Those are the ones that really get to me the most. Even though I love all horror films pretty much, I, I'd say I'm a huge um, horror fan that made a horror movie. Um, I even work for iHorror as kind of director for that website. Nice. But I, um, I like the whole entire horror genre, but really the, my top three are slashers, 
devil films and home invasions. Mm-hmm. What, are some sure. your, what are some of your favorites uh, of each of those? Oh, well, for sure. Um, my favorite horror film of all time is Frontiers. I love Frontiers. Um, Inside. Um, and I'm talking like, these are like newer, you know, in this century mm-hmm. horror films, um, inside your next descent, um, a huge fan of the evil dead, uh, the old one and the new one. Um, and then of course, you know, I love the classics like five the 13, Halloween, nightmare on Elm street. I've always been huge fans of them. Um, what else recently that I just love? I love Kidnapped. Kidnapped, I loved. Um, this year, my favorite film was Train to Basan. Is that how you said oh, that? Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, yeah. We're actually giving away uh, a copy of that on the show. But yeah, that was... Are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that yeah, was that's, great. That was my favorite this year. Yeah. It, was, um, it was really interesting, this real quick, because uh, I used to zombie movies that are always uh, from America, and so they're really full of guns, which is fine. But it was weird to see, because uh, this is a Korean movie, and there's no guns at all, and to see, so it was like a totally different take in, of the zombie genre, because, uh, you know, they don't, yeah. have to, they don't have guns to, uh, to rely on to, to kill the zombies. Yeah, yeah, it was really great. I thought it was good. It, got, it had everything. It had the horror, it had the gore, it had adventure, it had kept you emotional. Mm-hmm. It was a good, it was really good. Yeah, I like that one a lot. What are some of your favorites? Hmm. Of, of, of all time? Of all time. Of all time. What's your top, your mm-hmm. top five? Let's I always, see. I always can tell a horror person by their top five. Well, I'd probably, I have to put the original Frankenstein um, and, and Psycho, those two of my favorites. Uh, I love Creep Show. So we got three there. Uh, that was my first horror movie I ever saw. Creep show. Oh, well, that's, right. that's the first one yep. I my mom ever bought me in VHS tape. Okay. Let me think yeah. of some other ones. Uh, Annabelle and Troy, do you have some? Your top five? Um, well, Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, they're tough to beat for me. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Christine would probably be top. You know, up there in my top five too. I love Christine. Yeah. I really What's like, some of your current mainstream horror films that you like that are current? Have actually, you liked any? Yeah, this year I really liked. Um, <laughs> I really liked Don't Breathe this year. I thought that was that might be my. Did favorite you? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Don't Breathe. I thought was was pretty pretty cool too. Mm-hmm. Yep. There was a lot of good ones last year. Um, it was a what's the one with the? It's kind of like a not a haunted house, but there's like demons that down in the in the basement. Oh, uh, uh, where we are, or uh, yeah, what we were? Uh, we're still here, I believe. We're still here. Yeah. We're still here. Yep. That oh, that one was tremendous. really good. Yeah. yeah. Like yep. Really what good. Was it was on German my top one with the my top oh, list. Yeah, Baskin was really good too. The Baskin was weird. Was yeah, good. that's a bizarre. One. Oh yeah, that was the that was the devil. Yeah, yeah. that was scary. Mm-hmm. Are you build the up something to throw in here? Yeah, I realized I was I muted myself, oh. so sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, uh, some, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, for recent ones, I, I really like the witch. I like the, the stuff that's not necessarily like slashery always. Some of them I like, but I really, I really like the witch. Jeez. What else came out this past year? God. We go see these movies all the time. But of course I can't. Yeah. I'm freaking exhausted. Um, how about us? Did you like us this year? I see. I don't even think we saw Hush, did we? No, I, I saw it on Netflix, I believe. Yeah, it's a, that, that it's was a home invasion. That, yeah, a lot of people really like that. Was with the the deaf girl. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I haven't seen that one. I thought it did well this year. Mm, uh, yeah, that one's on the, on the, on Netflix now. That's where I saw it. No, I think I saw it actually when I I was in a I was in the hospital over the summer and I was watching everything on Netflix. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had the time to catch up on a bunch of stuff then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, I don't know if you, I guess you don't want to spoil it so much, but do you have a favorite kill in uh, Pitchfork? Favorite I do. kill. <laughs> oh, I you one. do? What's your favorite kill? I have one too. 
I have one. I don't, I really don't want to give this away. It was actually something that a, a uh, good guy did towards the end of the movie. It involves a table and knives. I was so, yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of in love with that one too. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> I, I liked one early on was, uh, when uh, someone gets, uh, it's basically they get uh, pulled underneath the the bed, and then you see the pitchfork coming up through the bed, which I thought. Oh, was great. oh okay. yeah. yeah. My my favorite really was I really fell in love with the love story part of it, which was uh, Rocky and Janelle, with their their like little Romeo and Juliet moment, and I just think that kill was shocking, and um, I thought it was beautifully shot. Mm. I love their 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 moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dug that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, you know beautifully shot and stuff, uh, uh, were you in charge of that? The like the cinematography or did you? Um... That was uh, Rager Terrace was my DP on on that. We did a lot of um, music videos together. Okay. Uh, did, does that help prepare uh, to make a horror movie? Uh, making music videos. Well, I had been, I, uh, does it help? <laughs> I guess, I guess I can say yes, it did. Um, I think just it being on set. <laughs> yeah, it, right. It didn't hurt. Um, I recently had done a Bollywood film and really when, yeah, I recently done a Bollywood movie and when I went over there, they, they really, they, you know, I'm used to being a choreographer and there's always a director too. And, in a Bollywood scene, they, the, 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 the director steps back and kind of lets the choreographer really direct the scene and really um, let him um, do his vision yeah. without Mr. stepping on the choreographer's you know, toes or anything, and literally. So I, um, I got to really experience what it was to really be put into the director's chair and realize I, I could do it. A lot of people had been telling me, you know, you need to direct, you need to direct, and and if I was going to direct, of course, I was going to direct a horror film. So I, after that experience, I realized I was ready to, to transition into directing films. Hmm. What was the Bollywood movie? And how did you get involved in, in making a Bollywood film? <laughs> I, I, I seriously have had a Forrest Gump-like life. I mean, I've, I've danced for a king of a country. You know, I've had an Emmy nomination dancing alongside Michael Jackson, king of pop. Uh-huh. I've, you know, I've been to... You know, done, done a Bollywood movie. I've, you know, I just had such a Forrest Gump like life being this farm boy with a dream <laughs> from Claire, That's Michigan. Wild. Yeah, I grew up, you know, milking cows my whole life. And wow. And I just had a dream. I had a dream and I just haven't stopped. It's like run, Forrest, run, except I'm like dance, Glenn, dance, and I just <laughs> stop. <laughs> and That'd I just be the really believe in going like... after your pa- Yeah, I just believe in going after your passions. And my passion was horror. And so I said at the top of 2015 that I was going to direct a horror movie. And I didn't stop until it was done. I'm still going. I'm doing all the DVD extras right now and enjoying every second of it. Yeah. So you've been really excited about this. Do you have plans already oh. on making more horror films? Oh, yeah. I, I hope that this is my next career direction. I really, I really want to do... Um, horror films. I really want to stay in that genre. And when I created the, even when I created Pitchfork one, I didn't just, I just didn't think just Pitchfork one. I definitely have thought trilogy. So I already have Pitchfork one, two, and three all planned out. That's really cool. That's awesome. Have you ever thought of incorporating dance into a horror movie? (laughs) (laughs) Are you saying that because of, are you saying that because of the barn dance? (laughs) Yeah, I was just listening to the soundtrack for Little Shop of Horrors earlier today. We need some more That's very true. musical horror. Yes, we need musical lot. horror. Yeah, I mean, I think if someone's going to do it, I'm the guy to do it one day for sure. Yeah. It, there you go. That could yeah, be. We'd be all like, over that. <laughs> yeah, I've um, you know having the the music video and musical background, and then having the love for horror. I I would love eventually to definitely get into that. 
We did see over, uh, it, it wasn't really a lot of dance so much as the music part, but Silence the Musical, oh my God, <laughs> so funny. Yeah. Which it was a yeah. it was a musical parody of Silence of the oh, Lambs. I saw it. Oh, you did. My, my, oh, my, wow, roo- my awesome. roommate, my roommate was in it. Oh, nice. That's oh, awesome. wow. Yes. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yep. Deidre Goodwin. Nice. I huh? wonder if you could pull off a musical, uh, like a musical dance horror, and not have it be meant to be funny, and have it just be straight up hmm. scary. You know, they tried to do that recently. I can't. What was the movie with? Kathy Lee Gifford's daughter that came out about two years ago. They tried to do that. It was like a, a, a school of like a high school putting out a musical and they tried to do that. And it did I still come across kind of campy. Yeah. I think I remember that. Cause I think we, uh, I think we had the screener for it, Annabelle. I remember, yeah. It I was remember it, I really... the, the trailer for it was great. Yeah, like, it was, was a just, girl just uh, in yeah. Red shaking, and then some hook came and hooked her, uh-huh. and she dragged away. Yeah, I was just gonna say the exact same thing that the tra- the trailer looked amazing, and I think maybe the opening yeah. scene was great, and then it was kind of it didn't yeah. it didn't yeah. live up to uh, the expectations after that. But yeah, I, I remember that. Now, I don't remember the name either, but yeah, I totally remember that. Oh, <laughs> uh, was that stage fright? I think that's what no, it was. no. But no. stage fright was good because stage they sang fun. a lot in that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the meatloaf movie yeah yeah oh, okay. yeah, yeah that one yeah I like that, one. that was fun that was fun yep. so I like the look of the killer in that one too yeah yep for sure so, what what did you guys think of Pitchfork himself the the actor and the character I thought he looked great I think that yeah that, I loved his look yeah I thought that stood yeah. out right away when I saw the trailer yeah. and when I and when you see like the poster art for the movie yeah thank is, you. Uh, you know, yeah, that was what really like kind of made me want to see the flick in the first place. Yeah. As soon as I saw that look, mm-hmm. okay, all and right, great. I, I, great. I forgot. I should have mentioned this too when you were asking my favorite horror because I always have a thing for like uh, uh, kind of crazy hillbilly uh, killers in movies. Like, <laughs> okay. So yeah, so as soon as I saw that, I was like, "Yep, this is gonna be something I'll enjoy." Because I love, uh, oh my god, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, oh yeah, Wrong Turn yeah. and uh, what's that one? Troy? The Wrong Turn. Yeah, I like Wrong yeah. Turn. And, uh, and uh, I'm trying to think of the one with Farmer Vincent. Um, oh, um, Motel Hell, Motel Hell. Yeah, Motel Hell. Uh, oh yeah, okay, nice. Yeah. That's a great old one. Yeah, they're just. Did you ever see the Cottage? Did you see the cottage. UK? Oh yeah, I, I enjoyed that one. I think that's def- yeah. that's one Troy. It's been uh, Troy's been telling us to watch. I don't think yeah. I've ever seen it. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seems like that would be right up Neil's alley too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. When why, he said but... hillbillies. Yeah. When he said hillbillies <laughs> and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a very mixture of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know why. And I hope you have grown up on a farm. You don't take that as an insult. But there's uh, for people up north. There's a. <laughs> There's just something inherently kind of creepy about like uh, about the about oh, yeah. Billy kind of guy, you know. Well, it's funny because most of our actors, you know, they they didn't grow up on a farm, of course. So uh-huh. it was funny because that night when we were filming, they were always very spooked and freaked out because the Amish, the local Amish, would be just like in the darkness and in the trees, hovering in the back, watching <laughs> in the dark, <laughs> and it was freaking all of the actors out yeah, so I much. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I would so think, I was really coming up with this, like, okay, I need to do like a creepy, really dark Amish crazy yeah, film. Yeah, that would totally work too. I'd be all over <laughs> that. Yeah, <laughs> I think that would add to the atmosphere of being in the movie. Uh, you know, if you're an actor and you're already oh. kind of creeped out about something out, you know, out in the woods, kind of watching you. Well, that was the great thing too that I did with the uh, actors is they all did stay at the house, the stone house that was my house growing up as a kid and my, it still was my parents' house. So they all, my parents left, they all moved into there, got to know each other, all became really good friends. And then Pitchfork himself, I put in a hotel in town that was an old hotel and away from the actors. So whenever they met Pitchfork, which was during their scenes, that was the first time they were seeing him um, face to face. Oh, nice. Yeah. It was really important for me to really separate them and then have that real moment where they get to really, they're in the character, they're into that scene and then they're actually facing him for the first time. That, 
you know, that's been done in a few things, and I always, I always find that interesting because then you get their, uh, like, their kind of first impression of uh, of the character. Yep. That's why you don't see tons of, like, you don't see, like, a, a real screen. They're more, like, in shock because they're, like, taking him all in when they see him for the first time. And Pitchfork's really becoming Pitchfork in this movie. That's what this is about, is him becoming the monster that he realizes that he is. And it was really nice to see that happen because after this movie, every, you know, hopefully everybody knows what Pitchfork is and what he looks like. So there'll never be that feeling again. Mm -hmm. And in this one, we really get that feeling of people seeing this monster for the first time ever when they turn around and are facing him. Mm -hmm. It's almost like his origin story then. Uh, Yes. Which uh, that, that's interesting too, because you said you like comic books, uh, comic book movies. So, oh, yeah. uh, so that in a way, that's kind of you know taken from the comic book genre too, having the oh. uh, origin story of uh, of the character. But yeah, yeah always character. very important. Yeah, you know it's pretty crazy because you know the logo or the the Logan poster that just came out with the little girl holding on to his hand, and actually it's really crazy because we were going to create a poster of just our little girl character Jenny holding on to Pitchfork's pitch hand. Hmm, so we were going to do that exact same idea. Uh-huh. That's very cool. No. But uh, Annabelle has, uh, wants to apologize. She lost, she lost power as she is, so uh, she's going to take off, but she wants us to say uh, bye for her. And sorry that she won't okay. be for the rest of the interview. But, That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully she'll get her power. Bye, Annabelle. But, but the, uh, <laughs> then, yeah, now, maybe she's with the Amish now. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh-huh. I like, try to survive. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea of an Amish uh, horror movie. Now. I'm thinking about that. I also like the. Uh, I never saw this in a movie before. Uh, maybe it's been done. I don't know. But uh, in the credits, you have the um, you have the Twitter handles, which I thought yeah. you know you know you're given uh, their credits, so you know you got your name up there, and we're in an age now of social media, so. Uh, that's kind of brilliant, really. Yeah, because sometimes, yeah. you know, if I see something, I just in a think movie that I social like, media is to... such a huge part of, you know, the nowadays times. And it's like, you know what? If you like Pitchfork's performance, tweet him right now. Go right ahead. Yeah. If you, hmm. you know, if you liked the lighting, then you get to know right away who lit it and you can write them on Twitter. And, you know, I want everybody's dreams to come true. So. Yeah, I mean, I do that some, you know, like uh, if I'll see somebody who stands out in a movie, you know, you might go and look them up on MDB or whatever. Try and find them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then, you know, sometimes they won't even have that kind of information on them, so. Uh, <laughs> right, right, so why not be able to, like, really, like, say I loved your performance mm-hmm. and tweet them right at that moment? Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, that's got to be gratifying for everybody, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's not like I thought it's, it was... Well, it's, not, it's not like it's taken away from anything that's going on, you know, in the movie. It's, you know, in the credits, so it's cool. Yeah. And did you, uh, were you hands-on in uh, in the casting of the movie? Yeah, actually, when it comes to casting, it was pretty much um, all people that I knew and had worked with before. So, like Gordon, the nerd, was from the Bollywood film I did. Nice. Um, let's see. Um... I had, um, I did the E network. I did a show called men of the strip. That was like a magic Mike type show. And I grabbed Rocky, the guy who played Rocky, Keith Webb from that show. Um, three of my dancers that had done award shows. Um, I did a group like the pussycat dolls called the knockouts. Um, grabbed a girl from that. Who's my best friend in the beach. Um, so really everybody was, well, one was my roommate from in my twenties when I lived in New York city and we were auditioning and trying to get jobs. And now she's a mom and lives in Michigan actually. So I hired her as ma. That's one of my roommates from in my twenties. So pretty much everybody that was in the film was somebody that I knew mm-hmm. and had worked with before in the past. Yeah. So I thought what a great opportunity for me to highlight because why go to casting when I have all these talented people around me? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I was like, you know what? You want to come to Michigan for, you know, <laughs> 10 days, 12 days and film a horror movie with me? And, mm-hmm. and they did. They believed in it. So you said you uh, filmed it on your, your parents' farm. Uh, uh, 
you know, have they seen the movie and uh, what did they think of it? Yeah, I mean, they saw it and they they're kind of confused on how did they raise a son that came up. <laughs> 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 you probably be, should be worried be about if they didn't feel that way, <laughs> right? Exactly. But they, um, they, they, I think they've they've watched it over and over again. Um, it's it's you know it's a, the location is one of the stars of the movie. I feel um, the barns, the the fields, the stone house. I think all of it is is just a perfect atmosphere for a horror film. Yeah, and if you really have, do. yeah, and if you'd have to go and uh, you know like create all that, you know, it would the oh, podcast would be yes. Know, oh yeah, the price. Yeah, and we were insane. a very skeleton crew, indie budget, you know, very ultra low budget, you know, and we we shot it all with one camera. So, you know, having the location just saved us so much money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got to film it. We got to film it in order. So oh, it was like we got to you know from the beginning to the end. That's what you see is how we filmed it. Mm-hmm. I I always thought, uh, you know, when I hear about how movies, I always would think that would be the best way to go because I think you're, you know, your oh, yeah. character like arc in the, in the movie if you're filming, you know, the end after all these other things happen oh. as opposed to filming that first. Yeah. You know, yep. Just uh, to me, it would make logical sense, but I, I guess sometimes yep. logistically it wouldn't be possible. But... Yeah, I mean, when you're dealing with so many different locations and. And you you don't have access to them except for this certain day. Mm-hmm. That's when all of a sudden you you have to film out of order. Yeah. And, uh, who did the special effects? Um, the special effects were done from a friend of mine uh, in L.A., um, Rayfield Rogers, and his friend Paul. They did all the special effects actually. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, back to the slasher thing. Like uh, we don't have you know. There's like the real classic ones, uh, Frankenstein, Dracula, all stuff, and then like uh, uh, then you had Jason and Michael Myers, and uh, but there aren't really too many like uh, current guys uh, that are like uh, that have franchises. You know what I mean? Like there's right besides like remakes I, of ones that we've already seen. I yeah. feel like it's it's not thought thought of when creating a horror movie, and that's kind of where I was going with it is I, I felt, you know, the last, the last real like franchise has been hatchet really. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And, and, and jigsaw. I yeah. feel like they're the, the two most current, I'd say kind of maybe a slasher type characters. And, but it's been a while since we've had these like, you know, Freddie's and Jason's and, and Michael's and, when I was creating it, that's what I was thinking in my mind the whole entire time was that kind of character that people would want to see over and over again and watch him develop. Because in the first one, it's kind of cool. He's, you know, by the 13th, there wasn't even a Jason. It was the mom. Right. right. You know, and so this one, it's really, it's, it's Pitchfork's first time out in the world. He's, he's learning that he's a monster. He's becoming Pitchfork. And then in the second one, you know, it's going to be five years later. And we actually, now he knows who he is. He is a slasher. He is a Jason, a Freddy, a Michael. Like he's ready for the kills now. He wants to kill. And, and, and that's going to be cool to see that. And then part three is we go all the way back to the origin where, how did he become, you know, the boy and how did he become the monster that he is today? Yeah, oh, by the way, I, I that's a, a modern uh, slasher I do enjoy is uh, Hatchet, the Hatchet films. So you have a uh, yeah, really yeah, fun yep. I do too. Stuff, yeah. yeah, Victor. Yeah. Yep. And uh, they have the comic book that's coming out. I just saw the uh, the cover art for it. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that, great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be a, that was a dream of mine too. I'm hoping I can get Pitchfork to become a comic book oh, too. That would be very cool. Yeah. yeah, I think it was either our second or third guest on the show back in 2006 when we started was Adam Green. Was uh, you know when Hatch was coming out, and I used to talk to him on on MySpace. Which is, yeah, we didn't oh, know who he was at that time. <laughs> it was really dating the show. <laughs> on MySpace, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, making your first uh, your first uh, feature, what are some of the things that uh, like uh, you didn't expect going in? You know, to, to making your first movie. Um, I guess that 
the 21 days of filming was going to be the easiest part of, um, of making a, a, a feature film. Um, it was scary too, because when it was all done, then all of a sudden it was like, okay, now what? And, you know, how do we get a distributor? So that was, that was a little scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think just not knowing the things that could happen, like our line producer and the person that was in charge and pretty much was running the ship got in a car accident the day before we started filming. Oh, oh no. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that was scary. And luckily I had a, a PA, you know, my, or my director's assistant, he just stepped up and just probably didn't sleep for 21 days. Um, and everybody just really helped out and, um, she's okay now, but it was, it was a pretty severe car accident. Mm. Um, so, so it's stuff like that. And, you know, it was, it was really a learning experience as I went along as well. Um, you know, enjoying all the process of from just the credits to the special effects, to putting in the score and working with the, you know, the person who was doing the original music and the editors and, all of that. It was just such a great experience. It's just, I, I had to pinch myself all the time when I was doing this. <laughs> so it says that uh, it's going to be a theater in theaters on uh, starting January 13th. Is that like, uh, uh, do, do you know where? Is it like limited release? Yeah, it's a limited release right now. Our distributor, um, we're opening up in LA on the 6th right now. Okay, cool. Or on the 7th. I think it's the 7th in LA. Uh, we're opening up and then it's on demand on the 13th right now. Nice. So oh, you'll be, cool. you'll be seeing it on direct TV, um, Xbox. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a whole big list in demand. Um, all those Comcast, Time Warner, all of that. Yeah. Google, Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you are in LA or you get a chance to see it, uh, there, there is uh, something in my opinion, special about seeing a movie on, on the big screen. But, uh, you know, yeah. anywhere you can yeah. see it is cool, though. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's, it's a really fun film to see in a movie theater. Yeah. I've seen it, I've seen it um, you know, during our film festival tour. Mm -hmm. I got to see it a lot on the, the big screen, and, and it's just it's really nice to see. How, how, is that a nerve-wracking experience, watching your own movie with, like, a group of people? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, no. I mean, I've been in the business for a little while, and... Um, you know, life's short, so I, I'm enjoying every moment of it. Uh, you're a better I, yeah. man than me. I think I'd be terrified by that. <laughs> no, I really am like, like, you know, like, uh, this is awesome. Everybody, like we made a, we made a horror movie. This is, this is some really cool stuff. And, yep. uh, you said about the, uh, well, what was it? What was the, um, what was the reaction like, uh, when you were showing on the festival circuit? Um, it's been great. We've won awards at every film festival we've done. Um, it's been really a fun time. Um, and the reaction has been great. Um, and, and I didn't know, I didn't know if, you know, people would get it, if they would understand this little indie horror movie that, you know, we created. I wasn't sure if they'd get it, but everybody seems to really get it. And that's been, that's been the really, you know, rewarding part of this whole experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said earlier you're actually uh, putting together the DVD extras. Um, so uh, what's what's planned for the extras on the DVD? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we'll be doing the making of the monster. So you'll really see Daniel, the actor, become the monster. Nice. Um, so yeah, we we actually film behind the scenes stuff every single day. So we have we have over 35 hours of um, behind the scenes oh, footage wow. that we're going through right now. Yes. Neil and I are suckers for that stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good. Like, we really, we really wanted to show all that. So we're doing a behind-the-scenes, just the making of the movie, and then we're doing a making of the monster. Um, there would be some deleted scenes, um, a couple bloopers, um, and I'm going to do commentary. I was uh, going to do commentary. Yep. <laughs> yep, the commentary. Got to have and, that. <laughs> you gotta have that, and um, that's pretty much everything that's gonna be on there. Yeah, well, that's cool because I think uh, 
with so much, you know, uh, video on demand and everything, uh, what really sells uh, the DVDs or Blu-ray, they're having the hard copy, is having some cool extras on there. Okay, that's. I'm, I'm glad that you said that because we are making sure that we bust out all of that before mm-hmm. our um, deadline date. Yep, Very yep. Cool. that's great to hear. Yeah. And uh, I also want to say uh, the song, uh, Whole World in His Hands, I thought... Uh, I don't, you know, you think of that as just like a, a fun song or, you know, like a homey song, but it definitely has like this really eerie feel, uh, you know. Did you, yeah, you, yeah. Well, you know, when I, when the first, at the very, very beginning, probably the first month, I knew I needed to have a, a song, like a, a something that related to him. I mean, I feel like each um, slash, like from Freddie to Jason to, Halloween, they have these like this these songs associated with yeah. them. So or even Jaws, Jaws or yeah, you know something like that. Time, so time, yeah. I wanted I, I started looking up songs with the word hand in it mm. because of his hand, mm-hmm. and and I came across that one, and I thought, oh, how perfect would this be to make a really eerie eerie version? You know, um, if you go to our website, actually, Pitchfork is uh, rocking on a rocking chair in Jenny's room, listening to the music box of that. <laughs> so that song is a very important song uh-huh. in his um, past as well. Nice. Uh, what's the website, by the way? Pitchforkfilm.com. Nice. And uh, well, what's oh, the yeah. best way to uh, to follow? Uh, I know it's probably all the links are there, but what's the best and way to And let me give a shout out to the, the girl who created the whole eerie, whole world in his hand. It was a good friend of mine, Christy Bue. Oh, nice. She did all the original score, and she, she's the one that uh, helped create that. So really, really happy for her. Yeah. And she's a huge horror fan, too. So she was so excited. She's from, like, the Disney. She had a group called the View Sisters and was part of Disney, but she had this dark side, horror side to her. So she uh, helped create all the original music. Uh-huh. Oh, that's yeah. cool. It, yeah, that's pretty badass. Yeah. I like that. Honestly, yeah. it's one of my favorite parts. Of, uh, one of my favorite parts of the movie is, is the use of the songs. It really adds yes. a creepy uh, vibe to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And uh, what's the best way to follow you uh, on, online? Well, I definitely want everyone to to definitely follow Pitchfork stuff. So, mm-hmm. Pitchfork um, Facebook is um, Pitchfork Official, um, and Twitter is Pitchfork Film, and then of course there's PitchforkFilm.com, and then me um, on Twitter I'm Glenn Packard, and then on Facebook I'm Glenn Packard, the number four real. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we enjoyed the movie, and we uh, enjoyed talking to you, and I hope uh, hope everyone uh, sees it when uh, when it's available. Thank you, Neil and Troy. It was great talking to you guys. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, we wish you all the best. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, yeah. thanks. It means a lot from a horror person to another horror person. Uh, yeah. It means a lot to me. And uh, when you have the second one out, or when you fi- when you make the the dancing horror movie, uh, you can come back and, uh, and talk. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Well, yeah. When there's when there's a second one, I plan on doing a lot more um, social media as we're making it. So mm. nice. you know things like um, doing your show, like coming on set, all that kind of stuff. I would love to do stuff like that. All right, come around. Let's we'll yep. hold that to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. good. Yeah. Thanks. Really appreciate you coming on. Okay. Fun. Thanks, you guys. Thanks. All right, Happy thanks New Year. Yeah, oh, same okay. Year. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Good night. Hi, this is Kane Hodder, Victor Crowley, Jason from Friday the 13th. You're listening to WithoutYourHead.com.